is above anything that we can think of. It's above <laughs> all the world, above everything. That is our God. That's the one we're serving. Wow. He, he, he doesn't take he doesn't take advice from anybody. He mm. takes advice from himself. He does things by himself. Mm. Let us just let us just let us just surrender to him. Let's just <laughs> totally surrender ourselves to him. This is our God. This is the one mm. that we serve. This is the one that has all mm. things. He knows all things. He is mm. the only one that 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 take counsel from himself. He doesn't take counsel from anybody. Mm. Not from me. Not from me you yes no. he's above all wisdom above all power above everything yes no. he's above everything and oh, this is what understand. we are here today is above all above all and we have come to learn at his feet this, this afternoon we have come to learn at his feet this afternoon is above all just just let's surrender to him that today just take the whole of me all Take the totality because you are above all. You are above all. Yeah. Though we find ourselves in you, but you are above all. You are above all, all the power, everything that they want to weigh themselves against us, everything that is calling himself something here in your life, in our life, he is above all. All he is above all. Every reason, every reason of man, everything that man may want to do, he is above all. So just trying to. Hmm. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Father, we just surrender ourselves to you totally today. Every one of us will be speaking one way or the other, talking about something or another one. We just pray, Father, that the word will come by your spirit into our mouth so that we might be able to understand ourselves. We have come to fellowship with each other here so that we can understand you the more. That's why we have come. We have not come because of anything. We have not come because of miracle. We have not come because of any other thing only to know you, to understand you, understand the one that you have sent and what purpose it is. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Um, the first thing we are going to do is uh, brother Charles said that uh, we should memorize the, uh, the, 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 the memory bars for last week. Who can help us with that without looking at anything? <laughs> I think it should be John 1, 1 and 14. Who is going to help us? John 1, 1 and 14, who's going to help us? Okay, can we do it in part? Sister Rachel, you take John 1, 1, and Brother Iro will take 1, 14. Sister Rachel? Is she there? I'm a teacher, please. So, <laughs> I, don't, no, I don't have Kubuku, I don't have anything. Yes, yeah, Sister Rachel, can you help us with John 1, 1? In any version you like. Okay. All right. She's not answering us. Let's look for in the beginning. Hello. I'm here. I'm here. Go ahead. Okay. Hold on, jump one one. It's supposed to be a memory bus. I'm hearing you opening the beginning. <laughs> In the beginning, the word already existed. The word was with God, and the word was God. Amen. Brah, you know, 14. So the word became flesh, <laughs> became human, yep. and made his home among us. He was full of fulfilling love and faithfulness. Amen. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the fathers, one, the glory of the fathers, one and only son. Amen. Um, who will help us with what did we study last week? We studied something last week. Who we have also with it?
All right, you want me to name name Sister Divine? Sister Divine. So Divine should be at work. We started the person of Jesus Christ. The person of Jesus the Christ. The person of Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Today, uh, in the person of Jesus Christ, we have seen his deity, we have seen so many things about him. But today we are going to look at the work of Christ. The work of Christ. <clears throat> and uh, looking at the word of Christ, just a minute. Right. The work of Christ. That's what we are going to uh, look at today. And uh, the, 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 the audio is about Sovereign Jesus as Substitute and Shepherd. And we are going to look at uh, our memory verse today. is in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 and 4. And I put it in New International Version, and I want us to pay close attention to every single word that is going that is going to be there, especially after the semicolon. Paul said, "For what I received, I pass on to you, to on to you as of first importance." Brothers and sisters, that little phrase, I think, is speaking to each and every one of us what we have received, what he has received. He said he was passing it to us as first important because it is very important because it is just the only thing that is, it is in there. And it is not about miracle. It is not by uh, uh, somebody opening somebody's eyes or getting armor or anything. Let's look at this, that Christ died for our sin according to the scripture that he was buried that he was raised on the third day according to the scripture so the the, the memory verse for for three and four which i put up in the the new international fashion is for what i received i pass it on to you as of first importance that christ died for our sins according to the scripture that he was buried that he was raised on the third day according to the scripture that is uh our memory verse, but inside that memory verse, inside that memory verse, we are going to see, in fact, when Paul said, is the first, of first importance, that is the importance of what we are going to discuss today. The totality of what we are going to discuss today is about the death of Christ. So we want to see the work of Christ. So, uh, and today, in the work of Christ, we are going to look at why we man need Christ's work. Why we man need Christ's work. Before we know why we man need Christ's work, we need to know what is that work. Because we don't need to know the work. I mean, if you don't know the uh, 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 job description, why will you need it? If you know the job description, then you will need it. So we are going to look at man need for Christ's work, the cause of Christ's work, the provision of Christ's work, the motive of Christ's work, the resolution and the continuation of Christ's work, and then the application of Christ's work. Um, we are going to fill our workbook, but of importance is that we're going to look at what is Christ's work. And <clears throat> looking at Christ's work, we are going to look at uh, the book of um, Okay, the book of First Peter, First Peter, and then we are going to uh, First Peter chapter two. Right. Really, I want to. I want us to start from. Uh, about verse 13 uh and that verse 13 you know the title of it which says respecting people in authority that's not in fact let's leave the verse 13 let's go down 
and start from uh, uh, verse 20. Oh, right. I'm going to start from 21. For God called you to do good, even if it means suffering. Why would there be suffering? What is suffering? Just as Christ suffered for you. So what, Paul, what Peter was talking to his listener of those days, who are actually under some uh, 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 persecution from the world around them. And, you know, uh, we are so sure of when things go wrong in our life, when we are trying to uh, probably at work, somebody's bullying us and things like, things like that. So this is more than bullying, but let's look at it. So he's now saying that for God call you to do good. So when we are talking of good, what are we talking about? That is obeying or following Christ's step, understanding what's I mean, if the Spirit of God is living in you, it will lead you to do according to God's will. So, somehow, we will not want to suffer, and then we lapse into something else. But this is saying that you are called to do good. It doesn't matter what it is in your life. It doesn't matter how it comes out. Just focus on what you are doing. Because we are going to look at something later, because your testimony cannot change. Your testimony about Christ cannot change. Therefore, Peter is talking to them here that you need to do good, good, even if it means suffering, just as Christ suffered for you, just as Christ suffered for you. So <clears throat> you see that in the first slide I showed to you there, I said the work of Christ is sovereign of Jesus. Sovereign of Jesus. And what is sovereign of Jesus? We all, if I ask you that, you would just say because he's sinless and he was crucified. Yes, he was crucified. Why will he be crucified? That's why we want to look at what is the work of Christ? What is it really? And we know where that one started. It started from Genesis 3 and uh, 15. That's where uh, the, the, the God had decided what he was going to do when he told uh, the serpent that uh it will make the it will make the uh the the offering of the man and the offering of the serpents to be against each other so god has decided on the plan of salvation on the plan of salvation even from that point so what we are looking at when we said christ suffered we could see say that somebody suffered for example if i if i didn't if somebody cloned my car number and beat the traffic light and the police came to me and said, yes, you beat the traffic light. Say, no, I didn't go that way. No, yes, you went. You, I didn't go that way. No, yes, you went or something like that. And probably my car is uh, Pojo and the car that cloned my number is a Datsun. And they could say anything, and uh, and you know, subsequently they convicted me one way or the other. I have to pay and then get some point on my life. I could say yes, I'm suffering for what I didn't do. But if I've done it, that can't be suffering. I'm just, I'm just uh, uh, getting the recompense of what I did. That's exactly what it is. So when we suffer, usually when we suffer, we suffer for uh, not wrongdoing but we suffer for uh, 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 when we are innocent of most of those things. That's not the only thing. Sometimes uh, some people may just, you know, at work, some people may just look at you, oh, you this black monkey or something, things like that. And then they started putting something and then making life difficult for you. Yes, but this, we are not talking about everything in this world. We are talking about what we have, what Christ has done for us, and how he has suffered for us. What is the thing that he has suffered? In the old, 
in the old world, even um, the Quran affirmed that Jesus was sinless. That the, every human being that uh, God created will be touched by Satan. But there are only two people in the whole world that have not been touched by Satan. That's Jesus and the mother. That's what even Quran said. But that's, that's nonsense anyway. <laughs> um, and we know that in the Bible, he didn't do those things. So in this case, Peter in verse 22 say he never sinned nor ever deceived anyone. He was, he was giving a testimony about the life of Jesus. He did not retaliate when he was insulted. He could, but he didn't. Not threatening revenge when he suffered. He could, but he didn't, because he knew exactly what was before him. And we, we really know uh, uh, what Hebrew uh, 12 and verse 2 says that because of the joy that was before him, he endured that cross because of the joy that was before him. We are coming to a point, please. And that's, I want you to really, really uh, listen and understand this thing. He left his case in the hand of God, who always judges fairly. Who always judges fairly. So somebody may say, hang on, if God is able to judge fairly, why will he allow somebody who did not sin to suffer? Somebody may say that. Or why will a good God allow suffering in the whole world? Or what, what you know, they, they could ask that question because what is happening is above human comprehension. It's above philosophy. It's above everything that human beings can comprehend within themselves. So, and that is why <clears throat> in verse 24, he was saying he personally carried out, carried our sin. So what was in his mind when he was saying that? In his body on the cross. Because he knew of something. We remember the Ethiopian Enoch in Acts chapter 8. He was reading a scripture. And that scripture, he couldn't understand it. Until Philip got there, and Philip now, he had now asked Philip, who was he talking about? He was reading this same scripture. And that scripture is Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. We are looking at the work of Christ. We want to know what is that work. Who gave him that work? So, in verse 3, he said, he was despised and rejected. Actually, that thing started from Isaiah 52. The narration started from Isaiah 52, verse 13. He says, see my servants, see my servant will prosper. He will be highly exalted. But many were amazed when they saw him. His face was disfigured. He seemed hardly human. And from, their, from his appearance, one would scarcely know he was a man. Passion of Christ, of the Christ. Passion of the Christ. So this is a, a prophecy of what, what is a messianic, messianic prophecy of what is going to happen to the Messiah. And when he was, when he was telling them, when he was to all these ones, for people for that and he expanded he told them he showed them he took that thing from the scripture and he allowed them to know so when we go now go to uh, uh you know the discourse like i said was uh, from uh, chapter 52 verse 13 and then if we now go to 53 and we get to verse 3 it was despised and rejected was it not yes a man of sorrow acquainted with deepest grief we turn our back on him. Look the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Yes, it was our weakness he carried. So it's now saying, that's now going to verse 24 of uh, First Peter. It was our sorrow that 
weighed him down and we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment of his own sin. So in the light of this, this is a messianic uh, prophecy, which Jesus himself alluded to in uh, Luke chapter 24. This is very great. This is because this particular thing is exactly the way it happened. Uh, uh, with, with this, Peter was now saying something. He was now telling those people at that time, those people at that time that, hang on, there was something that has been there for you. Christ suffered for you. So is suffering, what, why will he suffer? For what reason will he go on suffering? And this is the cross of the matter. This is exactly what we need. Oh, sorry. So, he personally, what does that mean? Why will he say personally? Because <laughs> Isaiah 53 did not say personally, but he said personally. Personally is that is, is, you know, when you look at some other translation and you look at it very well, you see what he was trying to say there that he was not forced to do that. He chose to do that. And we remember in the John, in, I think it's in John 10, say that uh, uh, no, nobody take my life from me. I lay it down for my friend. So he's saying that he's doing this he personally. Do you know that our sin, the blood of the bull cannot take away the sin. That is why the high priest year in, year out, will go and appeal for this, his own sin and the sin of the other people because the, <coughs> the blood of the, the bull cannot take away the sin finally. But Jesus died once for us, spilling his blood for that particular matter. And that one was once and for all. So he personally is the only one that can take away the sin. No other one can take away the sin. So the penalty, the, <clears throat> the, 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 um, sorry, the punishment, the punishment that he suffered on the cross is to take away our sin. We remember in uh, John 1, 29, uh, uh, John, John the Baptist said concerning him that the Lamb of God, that, the lamb of the world, that will take away the sin of the world, the, 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 the Lamb of God that will take away the sin of God. <clears throat> Yeah. The next day, John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, look, the Lamb of God would take away the sin of the world. So every other lamb that they have been killing, every other bull that they have been cannot take away the sin. This was a testimony concerning him. And if that is the testimony, it's the only one that can take away the sin. And when Peter said, he personally, not that he was convinced by anybody to do it. He personally took away uh, our sin, personally carried our sin in his own body. So we are looking at the work of Christ. The work of Christ we are looking at, we are need to really understand that it is not about one, what one, uh, that's that right? Oh, sorry. Uh, not what one person said or what person did not say. You need to have that testimony. See the testimony of John. The testimony of John is that he looked at the at Jesus and said, "That is the Lamb. That is the Messiah." And this is what should be in our heart that we know of Messiah. We don't care about one evil spirit coming from God or going from. That's none of our business. Our business is to know the work of Christ, the work of Christ. We didn't say, you will see this one, didn't say the word of work of Jesus, said the work of Christ, which the work of the Messiah. So in this particular, in this particular respect here, 
He personally carried our sin in his body on the cross. He chose to do it. No one forced them to do that. He chose to do it. He chose to be the substitute. Substitute. For the punishment of our sin. He chose to be the substitute for the punishment of our sin. The Bible says that while we are yet sinner, a sinner, Christ died for us. So in this case, he chose because if it were if it was for him to just say, Oh, let me see whether these people are good, I'm going to die for them, I'm going to take no, he decided because. And when uh, uh, Peter was talking in, uh, <clears throat> in Acts chapter 2, he said, according to the predeterminate plan of God, the plan of, uh, the plan of salvation, the plan of redemption has been there before. It is not just coming in. It's a plan that has been there before so if, uh, if you think it's judas uh, judas is a very bad man um herod is a, i mean herod is a bad man Pilate is a bad man they are just doing what god has predetermined it is not i mean we as human beings we will look at it as wickedness we will understand it as wickedness but to god it is his plan you are talking about Job and this. It is his plan. Not nobody can change his plan. Not by prayer, not by because God is not emotional. He has his plan. So Peter was explaining to these people here that listen, no one forced him to do this. He decided to do that work of substitution. He decided to suffer by himself. And why did he do it? This is where. It says, so that we can be dead to sin. How can we be dead to sin? Is it, is it that we are not going to be sinning? Is it that we are not? He did it so that we can be dead to sin. And that, you know, so that we can be removed from the grip of sin. We can be removed from the grip of sin. It cannot just redeem us and leave us that way. He is redeeming us, taking us back from the uh, 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 kingdom of darkness. And we are looking at his work. We need to know the work of Christ because this is very, very, is the key to everything because the whole world revolves around that. The whole world revolves around that. So what he has done is that he has done that so that we can be yeah, uh, uh, we, we can be rescued from the grip of uh, Satan who holds forth in this world. That we can be dead to sin. Does that mean that uh, as Christians we may not sin or we cannot hear? Well, yes, we could hear. But that is why he is there for us. That is why we have the spirit that will convict us in our in ourselves that hey guy you are going against the way the way of the lord you are going against the way of the lord and you know there was a provision in first john one chapter eight he said if we say we are not sinners we are simply deceiving ourselves but when we repent when we when we are convicted back by the spirit for unbelievers People who do not have the spirit of God living in them, a sin has no meaning to them. Lying does not have meaning to them. Anything just for them to just get out from whatever jam they are, they doesn't have meaning. But for you as a Christian, you will find out that even to tell lies, it will be a problem for you. To tell lies will be, because sometimes, when they ask you a question, and if you lie, you I, I don't know about you, but sometimes when, <laughs> when I was still young in Christianity, when I lie for the whole of those day, that day, I would just, I, I wouldn't know exactly what to do. 
تو من من always sin sin is in our dna is part of us you don't teach if you find a three year old uh, child uh, putting his hand in the in the cookie jar i said what are you doing there even with the finger filled with cookie they say i'm not doing anything or something you just give you you say ah, nobody will be, i mean well uh, people in nigeria could say, do that you know for some but nobody will call his child and say come here i want you to be lying you know though you know some of us do it in nigeria in those days that uh, when they ask just tell them i'm not at home they are teaching the child how to lie but they are not if you if you teach uh four or five years old they will just say daddy said i said daddy said i should, I should tell you that I'm not at home. <laughs> just bring you you know but at that age they could lie for themselves just to get out of jail so we have that DNA, we have that one in our DNA that we are sinners, even from the, that's why uh, David said in uh, uh, Psalm 51 that in, it is in iniquity that he was actually born, just as every one of us. So Christ decided, we, uh, last week we remember we learned uh, the person of Jesus that he was uh, uh, divine, he was. God man, so God decided, he knew we cannot rescue ourselves from the sin. He knew we cannot. And he himself cannot tolerate sin. So because we cannot rescue ourselves from the sin, he has come to take the fall for us. See, this one, in uh, I think in uh, First Corinthians, when Paul was telling the Corinthian there, First Corinthians, Chapter one, sorry, I think verse 17 or something, when it was saying that uh, about the, uh, he said, uh, he was talking, sorry, I can't remember which of them, he was talking about uh, um, the, the crucifixion of Christ as, yeah. So, <clears throat> 80, 80, 20 said, so where does this leave the philosophers, the scholars, and the world brilliant debater? God has made the wisdom of this world look foolish. Since God in his wisdom saw to it that the world would never know him through human wisdom, he has used our foolish preaching to save those who believe. What is that preaching? The preaching is that First Corinthians 15, which you said that Christ died according to the scripture, according to the died for our sin, according to the scripture. And it was raised, yes, and it was raised on the third day, buried, and it was raised on the third day, according to that was that was all they were preaching. And in verse 22, he said, It is foolish to the Jew. Who asks for sign from heaven? And it is foolish to the Greek who seek human wisdom. So the, 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 the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ does not have meaning to the world. That's why I asked for that song, so that you know that what you have is above all powers, it's above all wisdom, it's above what the world can say. And yet, what was it? It was crucified. It was laid behind the, the, the stone. It was like a rose that was being trampled on the floor. And that is the power of God. That is the power of God that we bring people, or, or that, that we bring people, I mean, that we give salvation to people. That is, a, 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 I think it's that verse 17 of that one says that, uh, no, 16. No, 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 no. Sorry. Oh, it's Romans, Romans 117. Say that the, the uh, um, just a minute. Okay, leave that alone. I'm just trying to, that. so what I'm trying to say to you is that uh, in, this, in, in, this, in this thing that we are doing, the work of Christ is found, is found in his death, 
burial, and resurrection. So the, 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 the Bible tells us that he himself, he himself, he himself, no other person, he himself carried our sin, he himself, not any other person in his body. He made the decision, not the decision was made for anybody through, uh, or the decision was made for him by anybody. So, what's this? Sorry. <clears throat> he carried our sin in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin. I've told you death to sin is just being rescued from sin. And why? Live for what is right. So Christ died, his work is that he died so that we may be dead to sin and live for what is right. So, we can now go back to our slide now. Mm -hmm. We can now go back to our slide. In that slide, we are looking at... And you see, man need for Christ's work. We have seen that Christ's work is, mm -hmm. is, dead, is dead as substitution for mm -hmm. us. We are the one that sinned, but it was the one that is carrying the, uh, the, the weight of the sin. So why will man need, man need for Christ's work? Because we cannot, by ourselves, carry our sin. Christ did it for us. So if we go to our workbook, if we go to our workbook, uh, I think I will do one thing. How many people, I don't know how many people have the workbook? Almost all. Almost all. Okay. So let's look at it. I, I have just done something so that we can, we are looking at a man's need for Christ's work. So man's problem from the A, we are guilty before God. And that one asks you to do something on there. And we can look at it, not righteous. That is what Romans 3, 10 to 12 is saying. We are, we, we are not righteous. We do not, we, are not, we do not have understanding. We are not seeking God. We have turned away from God or have become useless and no good work. That's the six things that were packed in there. Mm -hmm. The guilty before God. Those are the things. But we now have this one. In number one, that A number one. Through the obedience of one, the many be made righteous. Do not forget that he said, through one man, all many became sinners, isn't it? Because we all come from Adam. But through the obedience of one of one, the many will be made righteous. So as many that are found in Christ, as many that are found in Christ Jesus will be made righteous. If you are not found in Christ Jesus, you will still be carrying the Adamic sin. But if you are found in Christ Jesus, you will be made righteous. Our problem is that we are guilty before God because we are not understanding. We are not understanding. And from 1 John 5, 20, the Son of Man has come and has given us understanding. The Son of Man has come and has given us understanding. Another, another problem is that while we are guilty before God, so we are not seeking God. We are not seeking God. The Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was Lost. That's Luke nineteen ten. You know, I just put it there so that you can fill your <laughs> fill up your workbook. You can fill up your workbook. Another one is that we have turned away from God. Say you are straying, but now you have to turn to the shepherd. We have not even got there, but we are going to look at that. 
honor become useless this quality render you neither useless nor unfruitful in christ so if you are in christ you are not useless anymore if you are in christ you are not useless or unfruitful so that's what that one is saying if you are uh yeah so the, the, what he's saying is that uh, when you are in christ you have not be, you are no more useless or unfruitful if you are in christ so we can find that one from second peter 1 8 and the sixth one is no good work no good work for we are his workmanship created in christ for good work so what he's saying is that man's need for they say man has a need and that solution can only be found in the work that Christ has done. Because he... Pastor Adedeji. Pastor Adedeji. Yes. Um, the one of the man needs for Christ's work. No one does good. No one does good. Yes. What about people who, who do good and they don't, they don't have Christ and they'll tell you they'll go to hell? Where do they fall into? Right. Do you remember that one um, synagogue leader went to Jesus and called him good master. Sister Rachel? Yes, you, yes. You remember that? Yes. So what did, he, what did he say? What did Jesus, what was Jesus' answer? Jesus was like, why do you call me good? Yes. For no man is good except the Father. Okay. So you cannot do good. Now, that's number one. Two, in their parlance, you see, because when you are when you are reading the Bible, you don't interpret it with either Nigerian, American, or you have to interpret it according to the writer. You see, you if you look at uh, Psalm one thirty six, you see the Lord is good. They didn't say the Lord is better because there is only one that could be good in their language. There is only one that can be good. The only one that can be good is God. And now that Christ has come, because if you find anybody who says, I'm doing good, go and find out. You must be doing it for a particular reason. And if I ask you, why do you think, do you think because Jesus wanted fame, that's why he died for us? Or because he wanted to look good? Or because he wanted to be a martyr? No. No, because it was a predeterminate thing about God. So goodness in the eye of the world has nothing to do. You see, you remember um, that first Corinthian that I read, First Corinthians 120. It was describing that the way the world measure good things, best things, and things, that's not the same way God measures his own. God has his own measure, which is completely different from the way you measure. So unless you do that. For example, if you read, um, just a minute, if you read Romans, Romans 6 and verse 23, if you read Romans 6 and verse 23, I want to show you something that but the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ our Lord, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Very good. He's saying that the gift of God, so you have to accept the gift of God. If you don't accept the gift of God, I mean, he has chosen that through Christ alone <laughs> that he can give eternal life. That is his choice. So you need to accept the free gift of God. Say, the, he said, but the free gift of God. You cannot say that mm, I want to do good on my own. And when I'm doing good, I have not offended anybody. You are not accepting the free gift of God. You need to accept the free gift of God for you to be righteous before God. You need, you need exactly to do what God wants. The way he wanted it, that's the only way you can be righteous before God. That's, in fact, that's the only time you can do something that is right before God. 
Yes, sir, I, I think I also have an addition. In the chat, in the chat that you put on the screen, yeah. That is that was in that's in Ephesians 2:10, where it says, uh, no good works. That's Ephesians 2:10. I think the verse itself explains explain in that clearer form. For oh, we are oh. God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ, in Christ Jesus. So we can do good things a plan for us long ago. So look at the progression. First, establishing man in Christ. Then you can do good work. So you can put it this way, that good work is not the source of our faith. But if truly you are in Christ, it will be easy to do good works. But when we put good work before Christ, it's like putting the card before the horse. I know, I know why Starisha is saying that. Many people say, I'm good, I'm kind to mankind. You know, one day when I was in Dallas, I bought a car from some Indian people. And she, somebody was complaining to the reception. She said to me that I don't eat animal. I eat plant. How will, how will I not be good to man if I am good to her? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have all this vocabulary this then, so I don't know what to say. I was just laughing at her. Because you are good to animals, then you will be good to man. Because that's injury anyway. So good work is not the source of our faith, but it's the proof of it. It's uh, just, just the proof of our faith. Is this Rachel okay? Yes, yes, thank you. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so, in our workbook as well, uh, the question was, to what is man a slave to? John 8, 34, as said this, we are, you know, slave to sin. We are, we have become slave to sin, nothing else. And the answer is found in that one. So when we, uh, we, we, we are, how can we be set free? Jesus sets you free from the law of sin and death. Jesus sets you free from the law of sin and death. So um, what is the result of sin is death. And that's what she is asking you. Say, he who hear my word and believe him who sent me, as eternal life. So anybody who refused to do that, and from James 1 15, the answer is <clears throat> simply death. Simply death. And uh, the deep part of it said, because we were dead in trespass and sin, whom did we follow? And what kind of children are we? So if we look at Ephesians uh, chapters 2, verses 1 to 3. Can somebody read that for me? Anybody? Can I read? So Ephesians 2 from 1. You were living in your sins and lawless ways, but in fact you were. You used to live as sinners when you followed the ways of the world. You serve the one who rules over the spiritual forces of evil. He is the spirit who is now at work in those who don't obey God. At one time, we all lived among them. Our desires were controlled by sin. We tried to satisfy what they wanted us to do. We followed our desires and God was angry with us like he was with everyone else. That because of the kind of people we all were. Amen. So, <clears throat> so it's asking three questions. It's about, because we are dead in trespass and sin, whom did we follow? Satan. Yes. Whom did we follow? Satan. God Satan, God. devil. And what kind of children were we? Children of wrath. Children of wrath or son of disobedience, yes. children of wrath or son of disobedience. So, whose wrath will the sinners, uh, sons of disobedience experience? Obviously, it's not man's wrath, it's only it's God's, God's wrath. wrath. Amen? Amen? So, <clears throat> the question is, on uh, page 42, will God tolerate sin? Will God 
tolerate, tolerate sin. So, and that one the cause is everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law to perform them. That's Galatians 3, 10. So, <clears throat> because let's let's let, 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 let's let's let, <clears throat> let's debate that if i want to practice anything of the law like feet washing or something you know one of those things that people do what does this galatian 310 what does that lay is he saying if i decided that if you don't pay your tithes uh or job didn't pay his tithes, that's why he lost his uh this thing and i'm hammering on that what do you think the repercussion of Galatian 3.10 is on me? So you have to follow all the laws. And if you miss... Uh, do you mean that I should have beard? Yes. <laughs> and you can't cut it. So everything. So if you miss one and your garment also... Uh -huh. Mm. My garment, I have a lady shirt and a uh, no, t-shirt. No. Don't do that. You have to follow everything. Okay. So what our sister has told us is correct. And what she told us is you cannot miss anyone because it's a cause. It's everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of law. So how can we not escape that? We can only escape it because Christ has done that thing for us. Christ has done that thing for us. And if you remember, one of the uh, part in the um, uh, yes, he said, God has uh, uh, just a minute. Some people are disturbing my Oh. Uh oh, hallelujah. No. I'm sorry. You see what it was said in uh, that Roman 8 2. He has set you free from the law of sin and death. He has set us free from the law of sin and death. So, what he's saying is that if you are, when you are obeying the law, you are slave to the law. But when you are being set free, by Christ, that you are in Christ, that kind of law does not affect us again. So, um, sir, so does working in Christ means lawlessness if the law is been set aside? Well, <laughs> it doesn't mean lawlessness because the embodiment of all the law is in Christ. And therefore, if the Spirit of God lives in you, lawlessness cannot come in. If the spirit of God lives in you, lawlessness cannot come in. So, so technically, what the scripture is implying is that the law, though it's been set aside as a means of justification before God, but the law itself is still the default, default mode of man. Yeah, the, 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 law, the law itself is the, yes, is the default mode of man. However, what we are saying is that when you are in Christ, because you are a new man, because you have, I mean, uh, uh, in Ezekiel, Ezekiel 36, when God said he was going to remove the stony, because the law make the ark to be stony, and you know, and uh, uh, he said he was going to put the ark of flesh, and he was going to put his law in our heart, and he was going to put his spirit, he's going to sprinkle the water and his spirit in our heart, so that we will be able to obey his law freely, not uh, by somebody teaching or somebody coming to teach. So it doesn't because because there is because we are saying that we are free from the law does not mean lawlessness. It's actually solidifying the sin. And we remember what Hebrew says in Hebrew nine that it is not that the sin was uh, 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 bad, but the practice of the sin. And sorry, the law, the practice of the law, it was the one that was bad, not the law itself. So how people practice the law is what make it. That's why they have, they have need a new covenant because people cannot, man cannot even practice that law. But with Christ, 
And that's why uh, I think Romans 1.8 uh, said now there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. It didn't say those that are following the law because uh, Christ has set us free from the law, but not to be lawless, but to have the spirit of, of God controlling us. Yes. So a follow-up follow up thought now. So which means a key word in, our, in the centrality of our faith, like that Ezekiel 36, is that we have a new heart, not the heart of stone. We are created, now the law is in our heart. And we are supposed to live that out by the help of the Spirit. So which means the most focus of the Christian work is to live a life that is pleasing unto God. Not for in our contemporary world, those kind of thought is silence, mm -hmm. and we have focus on gifts of the spirit, working in miracles, speaking in tongues. But but for, if you look at the parallel of prophets, and even Jesus said in uh, John 15, 8, that those uh, uh, my true disciples are the ones that uh, bear fruits. So, which means the deeper thought from this discussion now is that. The work of faith is more of becoming like Christ, living out the spirit that is in us, and uh, not really focusing much on it. Yeah, you see, when you start focusing on those things, you are going back to law, because it's like you are remote, you want to remove people. Whereas, <clears throat> it is God that will do it from inner. Just as you have said, it's God that will do it from inner. The thing is, a, 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 you know, the default mode pre-Christ was to follow this law, but, but now, because God is the one that is going to do it, then we will uh, 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 be more Christ-like because of the spirit that works in us. And that's what, is, uh, that's what uh, Ephesians 3.20 is saying, that there's a power that works within us, which will be able to do what pleases God not what pleases us. Thank you, sir. Okay. So, um, uh, when we are look, let's look at uh, Romans 3, 23. Romans 3, 23. For, I think everybody should be able to quote that one. Brother Iro, are you not there? For all I've oh. seen, and come oh. short of the <laughs> glory of glory God. Of God. <laughs> yeah, for everyone yeah. has sinned, we all fall short of God's glorious standard. So, what we are looking at, what is, uh, man is faced with sin, because it is our default mode. And you remember in uh, Genesis chapter 6, when God says, my spirit will not contend with men always, because the thought of their heart is continuously evil. And evil says that, so well, that is sin. So uh, we are still faced with having God as enemy, because James 4, 4b, says because we are friends of the world. When we are friends of the world, we will still have God as our enemy. And we are still faced with subjection to the power of Satan. Why? Because around us all, Satan controls it. And unless you, uh, you understand or you have the spirit of God controlling you or you are not really controlling don't let me use control you you have the fellowship with the spirit you are the one that surrender totally to the spirit for direction if not you will bend to the world you will bend to the world and being a place to save himself we have said that one we are, there's no way we can save, we can't save ourselves unless God put his spirit within us. Uh, that's Ezekiel 36, which uh, we talked about the other time, is God removing those things that, um, that constantly make us to sin. 
and then when we receive his gift, which we have just said about uh, Romans 6, 23, when we receive the free gift of God, then he will deposit his spirit in us, which will be controlling us, which will be teaching us how to do things. So, and because we are unable to save us, we are helpless, Christ stepped in at the right time. Christ stepped in at the right time. Um, we talk about death, which is uh, talking about six, uh, Romans 6, 23. God gave us uh, uh, the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. So we are not, we are, when, we are, when the Bible is talking about death, it's not talking about the physical death, it's talking about the spiritual death. And that reminds me, that reminds me, uh, on, the, on the cross, when Christ carried that sin, you remember what happened on the cross? What was his speech? It's finished. Not only that, when God rejected him. Oh. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Do you know it was the same thing that happened to Adam? It was the same thing that happened to Adam. But Adam could not feel it. He could not say, why are you rejected? He didn't feel that he was being rejected. Rather, he was thrown away. The same thing that happened to Jesus on that cross. The same thing that when he was carrying the sin, God looked away. In case of Adam, actually God wanted to look at him, but he was running away. So he, he and, 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 and because we are, we are from him, really, you will discover one thing that we are friends to sin. We want to sin. We are like Jesus, who realized that because he was carrying that sin, God had looked away. And that is why we think it is only in church that we see God. That's why we are able to sin outside the church, but when we get to church, we are only, 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 only. We think we can run away from God. That's why we are able to sin easily. You know, I just, that's just something that came to my mind while I was uh, looking at uh, 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 Jesus saying that, my God, my God, you know, I was looking at it that Adam sinned. And God was sending him away from the Garden of Eden. And like, no, he, he, didn't, uh, he, didn't, he didn't look like he repented or felt anything. Mm -hmm. But when it was Jesus' time, because uh, he was the she, one what, that was... What if, only thing I was... Say that? No, it's a mistake. So, so sir, I, I have a thought here. That yes. is... The solution yes, that Christ brought is the solution to the eternal death. So in this physical world, we can't use him as a shield or defense, not to die. <laughs> it's, it, it's solution to eternal, yes, to eternal death. You can't use that one as a shield, not to die. No, no. That's a very good one. Thank you so much. That's a very good one. I mean, uh, uh, you can't, it's like uh, when you are traveling, you are using the blood of Jesus to cover the vehicle so that you will not die. You are using what you when we eat what when, when we eat the communion is also terminate death. Yes. The communion, when we eat anyone that is bit to die, if we eat the communion, you will not die. There's life in the communion. In fact, in fact, let's let's when we get to when we get to verse 25, verse 25 of that uh, Peter. You know, you know, when they say that uh, uh, the, uh, what does this say? He has carried uh, sin and then by his stripe we are healed. Mm -hmm. If <laughs> if we use that one, by his stripe we are healed, then no Christian will be, in fact, no Christian should die. No Christian should go to the hospital. Because you need to look at the discourse. Where well, is coming? And what is the interpretation of that discourse? Not, we cannot just pull one uh, verse 
and there's a by his tribe. Yes, we God can use it. Can, God can do his wonder at any time, but we cannot pull it at all time and say this is what I'm going to use. God, you can't predict God. You can't even say this is what God is going to do. Mm -hmm. I saw a plan now putting somebody in the water of better than uh, somewhere. <laughs> getting, I mean, the plan. I just saw it. You know, somebody just sent it to me. I, it's all those clowns but that's not let's 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 go on. sir before we leave that thought there's an ancient argument i had yesterday which i know the truth but for someone who may fall into that kind of category later on and the argument is that we can act on faith we can act on god's word based on faith even though god not expressly tell us anything so for example that by a stripe you are healed. I know that this discussion there has nothing to do with sickness. The discussion there is talking about sin, and we are healed of sin and its effect. Now, I want to step on my faith and heart on that word and say, sir, God, the one said by yourself, I am, I am healed. So I'm resting on this word today, and I'm dishing it out to everybody. I'm giving to start with me. It's like when I strike you, are healed. And I'm is, acting by faith. That is false hope. False hope. It has nothing to do with because that's that's false hope because that is in fact that has nothing to do with it. In fact, if you go to Isaiah, you see it's a messianic. Uh, 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 even don't use Peter. If you are looking at Isaiah fifty-three, it's a messianic prophecy. And you know the prophecy. Some have some have come to pass. Some will yet to come to pass. It is setting the set of believer at the end of time, not. Not, not now. So, uh, if God, if if you are being told by the Spirit to use it, fine, no problem. But if you think you can manipulate God, that I'm praying your word back to you because we have been told before that when you pray God's word back to Him, He's bound to do it. No, that's wrong. You need to look at what is that word. Actually, the, the spirit cannot even tell anybody to use it. <laughs> <laughs> Yours is it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not true. It's not true. Because the spirit is the spirit of God. And how can the spirit, how can God not tell you to use this to pray to me? It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's you see, I. Yeah. Just let's let's, let's just, yeah. understand that everything needs to be read according to the context. And do you know that most of those things that we read in the Bible, I always say to people, the Bible was not written to us. But it doesn't have Pastor Adede Jemai when he was writing it. And the people that read it, the first people that read it, they understood it. So we need to know. What is in the mind of those people who first read it and the writer? What are the situations? If you don't know those situations, you cannot just be talking. You cannot be talking. So, yeah, I was listening to another one yesterday. He was talking about uh, and you have to obey God. The first thing, if you don't want storm in your life, the first thing is that you have to uh, uh, be good to God giving gifts and things like that. He was saying something good until he started about uh, you make a vow with God. I come and I do, we are not in the Old Testament that you'll start making vows and vows and vows. Yes, you can have a one-to-one -one with, I mean, as you've been led by the Spirit. So don't let's, don't let's, please, please, people on the platform, uh, be informed that this word it's not, I mean, Peter said it's not, this prophecy is not of private interpretation that you can just say it is mine. I claim it. I receive it. You can do that. Sir, but that word being led by the Spirit is something, something we don't want, they don't want to hear again. Uh, they, they, because they'll be, they'll be like, so when will you know the Spirit will lead you? So it's better you act on this one that you have than to be waiting for the spirit to lead you. How do you different? That was a question that asked me. I know that somebody will be, somebody will, fall, will, will, will get into that discussion maybe sometime soon. Now, how will you know, how will you know when the spirit is leading you? So it's better you just act on this one and uh, just, <laughs> just presume, presume that it is God. Yeah, 
You know, you can't, you can't do that. In fact, you will lead yourself into misery, more into misery than anything, because you, you will do it and then uh, you get satisfied. <laughs> but minutes later, you find out that nothing has happened because you cannot manipulate God. So I think sir, we should just learn how to be quiet. When the spirit has not led you, be quiet. It's not the time it must generate move. Yes, yes, yes. In fact, that scripture uh, by stripes, if it's talking about or if it was referring to sickness, Paul would have given that to Timothy, and also Paul also uh, also would have used it when for his own uh, turn. When he had that turn. You know, and also will instead of asking Timothy to, uh, to drink some wine to make sure yeah, he, <laughs> said, he will have said, you know, by his stripes, you are healed. So just pretend as if the sickness is not there. <laughs> just to add, this is why most of our churches don't preach from the epistles because it deflates everything they can tell you. They can pick one verse, explain it, and run away. But they can't sit down to teach it because it doesn't go with their theology. No, they doesn't go with their theology. It doesn't make sense to them. And in fact, when they start, even when they start with that verse, you see them dancing. And for example, this that's that's all they will do. And then they will finally confuse the people sitting down. And then those people will just say, "All right." So please, we can't take that quickly. So. We want to quickly look at the uh, um, uh, Second Thessalonians one nine, the condemnation and eternal separation from God. So that's judgment for those who refuse God's provision. We cannot refuse God's provision. There's only one provision, and that's why Jesus said in uh, uh, John seventeen three that they may know you, the only true God, and uh, Jesus Christ whom you have sent. That's it. Every other thing, no more, no more. The cost of uh, Christ's work. Can we? Can I find somebody to help me read um, second? I mean, Philippian. Philippian two. Philippian two seven to eight. Philippians two uh, seven to. To eight. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and he died a criminal's death on the cross. On the cross. On the cross. Hallelujah. So we are to, if you don't want me to call names, uh, I want to answer quickly. We are to find. What are the three things Christ did when he came to earth? When he came to earth? That's verse seven. Three things. He gave up his privileges. He gave up his divine privileges. Yes. He humbled. For us. Yeah. The position of as a man. Somebody said something. He found in appearance as a man. He came as a man. Yeah, that's why he gave us his divine privileges. He, he humbled himself. And uh, he emptied himself. He allowed, I mean, he was born as a human being. Human being. No, and he, he died. Started. He died a criminal death. You know, that's, uh, uh, that's, still, that's verse 7 now we are looking at now, not 8. So we look at verse 7. So, uh, and okay, verse eight, you have said it, he died a criminal death. That's verse eight, that's what happened in verse eight. Thank you so much. So what, what happened to Jesus on earth according to Isaiah 53? We have read that today. With Isaiah 53 verse three. For our infirmities. Say that again. <coughs> He bore our infirmities. Verse 3. Verse 3. This, this one you are looking at. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief, 
it turned uh, it turned our backs. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. It was so, despised and we did not care. So it was despised. It was rejected because we turned our back on him and he was a man of sorrow. Okay? So, forgiveness of sin requires what? There's no need that anybody goes to, <laughs> to Hebrew 9. Forgiveness of sin requires what? Shedding of blood. Shedding of blood. What price did Christ pay to redeem us? He shed his blood. He shed his blood. Thank you very much. E, what did Jesus, what did Jesus cry out on the cross? We have said that one today. My God, why have you forsaken me? <laughs> okay. Uh, because God has abandoned him. Why? So, right. What did God do to Jesus while he was on the cross? Isaiah 53, 6. The one on the one there. The Lord what? caused the iniquity of us all to fall on him. Hmm. Uh, that's that's what it says. It's a sonorous. <clears throat> Can you see the screen? Yes. Okay, so. What did, what did God do to Jesus while he was on the cross? Something is covering your screen, sir. Yeah, good now. Okay. That's what? That's okay. Oh, take out the highlights. Don't worry. Uh, I'm not, okay. So verse 6. Yet the Lord laid on him the, the sin of us all. That's what God did to him. He laid on him the sin of us all. So, we... Sorry, we are we are moving. Don't worry, we'll soon get now. The provision of Christ's work. We know the provision. Who is the provider? Who who did the work? Who did the work? Christ himself. He Christ. volunteered. He volunteered himself to do it. His sacrifice was only a way to take away sin for all time not just once like the, the blood of the blue bull is just once and for all so describe what was that accomplished Hospital uh, three. before we rush away so christ's blood paid the price for sin once and for all so if i am praying now and i'm covering myself with the blood of jesus technically you are saying that i don't have any blood to cover myself with it's done it's done <laughs> It's covering yourself. Is it? Is it? Does the blood apply for covering or for sin? <laughs> <laughs> is it like a? <laughs> is it like an insurance thing? <laughs> no, you are laughing. Is it for insurance? <laughs> Based on what you are saying now, so there's no blood. So when I say when I pray such prayer, I'm just uh, I'm working in speculation. Even even if the blood is available. It is for sin, not for uh, insurance. It but was, at times when we pray, you can call the blood of Jesus Christ seven times. Blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. You will say, Holy Ghost, fire. fire. <laughs> <laughs> no, all those ones, uh, they, I mean, uh, I mean, the blood, the blood, the shedding of blood is to take away sin. Not it's a, it's amazing because we're th we're talking about it we're live now. Yeah. And I remember how long we I mean for me how long I did this <laughs> thinking. Well, we never thought of it and it's you know it is it's laughable now but it's amazing how many people are still in this. and you try to explain to them they start to argue, and you are telling them, look at the scripture. Tell you, because I was talking to somebody, and it was just like, I don't know the revelation that God revealed of uh -huh. Papa. So uh -huh. I'm like, oh. No. The scripture is never their standard. Really? And you see, this book is systematic. It first aligns us to the scripture, introduce Jesus to us, 
before you begin to know. But they don't respect the scripture. They say, no. Papa said, no. or Jesus no. said. You see, like you said, Sister Gwemi, um, because uh, about, about a year ago, I was speaking to you. I told her, I, I don't want, when we want to pray, I don't want any of those uh, open heaven, close this. I don't want to see it. Just take it away. If we, if we can't if we can read the scripture by ourselves and pray by ourselves, I don't want all those prayers. And the one I the one I banish is the one from uh, MFM. I banish that one totally. That anywhere you see, just throw it into the bush because it, see, it's not it's not our fault. We are coming from a paganistic and those things appeal to us. <laughs> Some of us have watched so many Nollywood films that uh, you have to go to the bush and call uh, Rapport, your voice one is year three times. You say what? Rapport is talking, but his voice is not there. Are you saying something, Rapport? Okay. <laughs> it is not our fault. It is the fault of the system, which we found out. So, uh, but thank God, we have seen light. We have seen light now. Amen. Right. Describe Jesus' death, what Jesus' death accomplished. This is crucial, and we have to be very, very attentive here. What Jesus' death accomplished. So, what did Jesus' death accomplish? In fact, without looking at those papers, let us reel it out. Without looking at the workbook, let's reel out. What, in your own opinion, do you think Jesus' death, because we have said the work of Jesus is the death Burial and rest and its resurrection. What do we think it accomplished? Where are the rest? Let, let's call them out. Yes, I'm going to call them out now. Uh, Sister Lydia. Sister Divine. <laughs> Pastor Ennis. Lydia first. Sister Mabu. Sister Shola, iPhone. <laughs> Sister iPhone. <laughs> yes. I want all the, I want Sister give me no, don't I will put that thing. I'm going to close that. Yes, yeah, Sister Mobile, iPhone, Sister Lydia, Sister Divine, Sister Rich. Sister let, let, let's see the screen now. You say what? The screen. You want to see the screen? Yes. <laughs> Right. Number four, it was a weakness he carried. It was a weakness he carried. Okay. What did Jesus' death accomplish for us? Yes. At least, uh, he, uh, can we say that? Yes. It, what did he accomplish? Uh, what was the accomplishment of those things? The first thing you should remember, what is his name? Redeemer. Yes. So, what did he do? In him we have redemption. Redemption. <laughs> and forgiveness of sin. Yes, is this is the re, uh, reconciler, you reconcile us. Is the one that is a, a mediator between you should you should be able to read those things out without even looking at the paper. In him, we have redemption and forgiveness of sin through his blood. Uh, because of what Christ has done, we have access to the we have access to the Father through the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 1.18. Ephesians 2.18. Yeah. Is this pastor's conference supposed to pour? <laughs> what other people do? Well, they are not talking. Reconciliation. <clears throat> Rescue us from the evil world and things like that. Please, the workbook, you can use it by yourself, but we are just trying to make sure that we do it together so that if anybody writes anything on it, you can cancel it and then put the right thing. That's why we are doing it together. So he broke the power of sin. So we are no longer slave to sin. And redemption by his blood made us right with God. And uh, what is the motive? Page 44. The motive sir, of sir, you said something now that is uh, that got me thinking. You said you are no longer slave to sin. Well, what about a, a big man of God came on the altar and said, you know, love us are sinners. 
And so you know, there are some sermons like that that start with you. You know, all of I know we still make small, small sins, but really, are we sinners? Before Christ, we are not. And that is the most important thing because it's not that we do not sin. But like I said in the beginning, the Spirit will convict you straight away. And then, what do you do when you sin? Go down on your knees and pray, and God will forgive you and wash you, according to First Peter, uh, First John, uh, one nine. So, uh, you see, when the big preacher comes there and talk about sin, he simply wants to uh, put fears into people first. So when he put fear into people, then he can start putting in things in between to make uh, uh, the thing fat. Because that's the only way. You pray like you have never prayed before. Well, that's, what does that mean? You have to shout like it's all those things. I see had it yesterday. I see had it yesterday. You pray like you have never prayed before. God will have to do yours today, today, today. I don't know what that means. Only God knows what that means. Uh, arise and let your enemy be scattered. Ask God to arise on your behalf today. So the enemy will say. So those are don't... from the fathers on the mountain. Valorio <laughs> 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 So uh, uh, Brad Paul, if they don't put those things there, their sermon is not going to be uh, effective. The first, the first thing is that they have to cast fear into their heart. And when they cast fear, then you, you have to come to them. You have to come to them. One I had yesterday was that there was a man whose uh, business has gone down, machine not working, the wife is mad. And that person said, you must pray for me. If you don't pray for me, you don't go. So I now put my hand upon his hand, anointed his hand. He went to. He put his hand on the machine. The machine started working without mm. <laughs> He put the hand on the wife. The wife, the wife woke up crazy. You know, that's only so, one man has that story in, in Nigeria. I know. <laughs> <laughs> He's the elder of them all. Yeah. That's all right. <laughs> He's the elder. Okay. Let's see what is the motive of Christ's work. Why did God save men? Very simple. John 3, 16. Uh, Brother Ernest, why did God save man? God so loved the world. Who's answering me? Brother Ernest. Okay. Maybe it's busy. For God so loved the world. Well, so simple. For God so loved the world. So what attribute of God is demonstrated in this in the salvation of men? Mercy. Mercy. And what does the author of the author call God mercy? Why does the author call God's mercy great? Romans six, uh, Romans five, six and eight. Yeah. Who is there? Romans 5, 6. Yeah, and 8. When we are utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and he died for all sinners. 8. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. So why? What do you think? What, do, what, what does the author mean when he called God great mercy? When he was talking about that, so why? Why? Remember, we are yet sinning, and God was paying the price. Because we were still in our sin. Did we deserve it? No. <laughs> we, don't. we don't deserve it. We don't deserve it. Because, it's, yes. But we are told we can so see to, uh, to speed up the mercy of God. I mean, I, I've had that several in winners. You so it, see it, it, for it, mercy. The speed of the word of God. I don't know how you do. <laughs> Who's going to sow it? <clears throat> because the man has to sow the seed. Because he has to speak of the word of God. That's how to, <laughs> the word of God is the seed. No, so no, no. It's money. When we give people money, God will show us mercy. That was all we had thought. 
that is wrong. That is that is possible. Okay. Uh, you know when we learn from the story of Lazarus, Lazarus is <laughs> very dead and buried. What <laughs> offering does he have to give? Ah, what yes. dance does he have to offer for God? No. Uh, mm -hmm. Um. You remember that in in Europe as well in those days, in the time of indulgence, I'm paying for. <laughs> They, they 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 did it here as well. Yeah. I don't know whether people know about that. Who knows that story? Mm -hmm. The Roman story. The story is that they will come to you and tell you that you still love your grandmother. Yes, yeah, so uh it's still in perdition, suffering. Ah. What can I do? Pay. We ask the Pope to pray for you. Oh, and the then, sale of indulgence is <laughs> What? <laughs> I said the sale of indulgences. Yes, same of the indulgences. So, <laughs> Debbie, you are just coming in. You know about the sales of indulgence? Yeah, I think that was one of the things that uh, the Catholic Church was indulged in those days that uh, I think uh, Martin Luther, no, not Martin Luther. Was... Martin Luther, correct. Yes, Martin Luther, yes, yes. Martin Luther. <laughs> well, uh, <clears throat> so, it's not only in Africa. They've done it here as well. And that's why people are not even going to church again because they don't understand that kind of thing. So, uh, uh, Lazarus could not pay, but Mary and Martha could pay. <laughs> if Jesus asked them, they will pay. If Jesus asked them to pay, they will pay. But Lazarus could not pay. So what I'm, that's what I'm trying to say, that we have been taken for a ride. That's why... Uh, 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 that's why generational cost is uh, is taking is the full, and people are see they are still praying against. They will pay. They will pray this we this month. They will come another month and pray again about it. They will come another month and pray about it again, because that's is not being taken away. Right. Resolution and continuation of Christ's work. Christ's death on Calvary finished the redemptive work for man. So let's read First Peter, First Peter chapter two. And verse twenty-five. Once you were like sheep who wandered away. Yes. But now you have turned to your shepherd, the guardian of your souls. Right. See, once you are sheep who wandered away, who are those who wandered away? People who do not know. People who Christ died for. But when Christ died and he took away our sin, will he leave us just there? Just leave us there. That okay, I've, I've paid the price, that's it. No. No. And this is once you were like sheep who wandered away. But because you have been redeemed back, but now you have turned to your shepherd. I know who is the shepherd. The good shepherd. That's Jesus. Christ Jesus. The good shepherd We always... So he did not leave us alone to follow, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the corruption which is around us. You remember we said it, that the corruption is still around us. And if we are just left, you see, we have just come together here now to study the Bible together. We have said one, one truth or the other. We have said so many things around us here. What are we, why are we doing that? Why are we doing that? We are being shepherds to ourselves. But we have a chief shepherd whose word we have to obey, whose word we have to adhere to. And that is why the first Corinthians uh, 15, 3 and 4, which says that, For I have delivered to you as of first importance what I also received. So what we, what each individual are receiving, we are now bringing it out. But where did we receive it? We didn't receive it from ourselves. We receive it from the scripture, we receive it from Christ, we receive it by the, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, teaching us. And that is why one or two or three of us can answer questions, 
not that everybody is, uh, uh, has the knowledge of everything, but what is this one saying? But now you have turned to your shepherd. What is the job of the shepherd? The job of the shepherd is to lead us to the still water, is to be our guardian, is to be the one that will keep us. And Jesus did not leave us as an uh, orphan. What did he do to us? He guided us. What, what exactly did he do? Yes, I know. Hello? What did he do exactly? As men that has received him, he made them to become the sons of God. As men that has received him, he made them to be the sons of God, and he gave us his spirit that will be leading, because this is about guidance. This is about teaching and making the way right. Making the way right is the work of the shepherd. The shepherd, uh, unlike the shepherd of these days, the shepherd of these days, like I said, I think I said it, Paul, I said it somewhere, that uh, yeah, unlike the shepherd, like uh, David, when a when, uh, wolf come and take one sheep, David will run after it and collect the sheep from, but these days, they will push you to the wolf. To take you up. So a shepherd take care of the sheep. Every one of us on this platform, we should be mentoring one person or the other. We should be talking to people. Whatever we have received, which we think is right, we should be we should be able to take it away and take it around to people. Don't let us just keep it with ourselves. Let us try as much as possible. We have received it. And we need to take it away. So, <clears throat> uh, but salvation story does not end there. The grave could not hold Christ. He lives and continues the work he began for us. His death gave us salvation, but he did not remain in the grave. He rose up so that we might be his witnesses. We might be his witnesses. He was not just uh, a hero. He was not just matter. He was, you know, he was the God that went and took the fall for us. And after taking the fall for us, he continually be guiding us. That's why he told his uh, disciple that I will be with you to the end of age. So he, his spirit will be with us and teaching us and leading us. So the grave could not hold Christ. He lived and continued the work. So how was Christ declared to be the son of God? Romans 1, 4. Romans 1, 4. Yes, Brian, you know. Um, and he was shown to be the son of God when he was raised from the dead. By the power of the Holy Spirit. He is Jesus our Lord. Yes. He was raised by the power of the Holy Spirit. That shows that it was declared to be Son of God. So that's 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 great. That's great. You see, when he was talking about if he did not go, the spirit will not come. He was preparing us for after he has been taken up because. He was not a, I mean, it's the spirit of Christ that is living in us. So after Christ made purification for sin, how was he exalted? Uh, Sister Gwemi, what do you think, what do, what do you understand by purification for sin? Sorry for taking, <laughs> putting you on the spot. That, that's okay. <clears throat> so the, uh... After Christ made purification of our sin, how was he exalted? He was exalted by... No, no, what, is, what is purification of sin? Cleansing of our sins, like washing away our sins, taking our sins away from us. So Very that good. we can the righteousness of Christ and by our um, by his own righteousness, we become righteous. We'll be, we'll, we'll be so now that our sin is covered, it's actually taken away. It's taken away, totally. Not remember again. Thank you. So, okay, you can answer the question then, since you want to answer the question. Okay. So, um, bless you. Uh, so, I was here, Dr. 
by, by sitting in the, pres, in the place of honor uh, in the right hand of God. Amen. That is the, the, is the highest position that can be given to any, anybody. Do you know, who can tell me, what is the right hand of the majesty? What, where, where is that? What do you think it is? That, that is, uh, when, when somebody see, uh, this is not in the Bible, I'm just talking about the culture of where the, the, the Jewish tradition at that time. When they say somebody is sitting at the right hand, that means the person has equal um, authority. He's actually, he's actually on that throne. Yes. is <laughs> uh, more positionally than the place. Is more yes. of the position. Yes. But the position. Yes. On that throne. I need people to understand that so that they won't say it's at the right hand of the they when they are saying that one, it's more of position. Because we you see, sometimes when we read those things, we don't understand them. And no, we, no we, are, we are thinking of Otumba and Osiba. So you yes. there's Otumba that, and Osiba. <laughs> that is exactly what is in our mind. In fact, it's your bad. No, 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 because. They, they respect the gift to the throne, just like they don't call Yahweh. You see, they don't call those. They don't call Yahweh like we say Yahweh, Yahweh. We sing a, we, They don't. That thing is too sacred for them. It's too sacred. That, yeah. They, that's why in that position they, they cannot just say uh, it's on the throne. They have to say it's on the right. So okay, we need to understand those terms. Thank you so much, madam. Thank you so much. Um, uh, Pastor Dilej. Yes, sir. Sorry to cut you a little bit here. I'm, I'm still, I'm trying to get this thing clear from, from my mind. The, the throne you talked about, because I remember there were, I think, two of Jesus's disciples were also struggling about if one would be on the right hand side or if he would grant them access to be on the right. Yeah, because they were looking at him on the throne. So that's why they want to be on the right and the left. Okay. But when they are talking about that throne, that throne is too holy for any any single any any man born of woman to speak about. If I just to add, sir, uh, that right hand side that is being referred to is some translation says rightful place of honor. <laughs> It's just, it's the throne. It's the throne. But, the, but the disciples, remember, they are operating from underneath, like us. So they are speaking, let us be the ones that is around you. But yeah, yeah. in the real throne above, the throne is encircled by the elders that are worshipping day and night. Yeah, day and night, yes. So yes. We, which place will you say God is facing? It's not directional. There's not, there's not directional. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. No direction. Okay. You all right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. We experience spiritual death through Adam. What benefit do we gain through Christ's resurrection? Where are you? Life. Salvation. Life. New life. New life. Yeah. The, the Bible refers to Christ's resurrection as the first fruit. This is ah. the this is the Old Testament term that speak of first fruit of the harvest. This fruit was set apart for the Lord. When used in the New Testament, first fruit implies a pledge of more harvest to follow. Therefore, Christ's resurrection holds the promise of resurrection for others. So when they, when they call him the first fruit of the bread, and I know that uh, some other people have used it. Uh, so what he's saying is that it's a proof our promise of more resurrection, the resurrection of the bread. That's what that's what it is for. Really, it is not for uh, 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 for salary of January. Uh, <laughs> well, I do. <laughs> no, it's not. So those who have been paying for January, for salary in January, is they are just wasting their money. Yeah, God doesn't even have God doesn't even have year. He doesn't have day. He doesn't have month. So but, but, sir, but I just sent me a, a, a circular written by the biggest Jew in Nigeria. He uh -huh. said he's the high priest of the commission. 
So you know, he has the right to collect their first fruit in January. So all the first fruit goes to the high priest. Right, that's yes, true. Let me let me describe. You didn't describe it well. He says <laughs> either the first. Listen to this. Though, the the money of the crossover service or the first Sunday. You choose one that you must. Total of one, some total, everything goes to the high priest. And he's the high priest. And he's the high priest. Mm. Yes. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> worldwide, <laughs> not just in Nigeria. And they say he's a very humble man. Very humble. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, so no, that, that is serious. He's taking the position of Christ. He's very, he's very serious. He's very serious. Yes. Ab absolutely. That's but, exactly what he's doing. You see, the part of the case is that people like that, they have taken the position of Christ very, very long time. They are not just taking it now. They are yeah. not taking it now. They have taken it a long time ago. Yeah. They, 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 I mean, one, one clan in Nevada was saying that uh, you come and redeem your firstborn and first son. So which woman will hear that and will not go there? <laughs> firstborn and first son. So all the women that, are, that have children, they are in trouble. Okay. Now that you have been drawn to God through Christ, what is Jesus able to do? Save those who come to God through him. Able to save them. Amen. E, what role does Christ hold exclusively? First Timothy. We have said that one, two, five. How many of us are here? Because I can't see people talking. <laughs> there are only four or five people talking. <coughs> yes, Sister Divine, thank you. I can't hear you. Sister Mabel. Yes, Paul. No, Paul. Oh. Yes. What e what role does Christ hold exclusively? Read first Timothy two five, please. Mr. Mabel. For first there Timothy. is one. Yes. For there is one God and one mediator who can reconcile God and humanity. The man Christ Jesus. So what role does it does he hold exclusively then? Mediator. Mediator. mediator reconciling us with God. Yes, it's the mediator. Right. When Jesus was going to leave, what did he promise he would do? That's uh, John 14 3. He said he would do something. Not who he will send, he will do something. John, oh, should I read it? Yes, read it, Sister Rachel. Okay. And after I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to my to myself so that you will be where I am. Oh. So he's what? going to prepare a place for us. And it is coming back to take to us to get believers to be where. We get them to be where he will be. Okay? All right. So let's look at applic application. Application really is that we need to, first of all, understand one thing that we have seen the work of Christ. And the work of Christ is very simple. He has come to be a substitute. And because he has come to be a substitute, we are free of sin. And when we know that, I don't think with that one, people can use us as pawn anymore. We need to know our position in Christ. Our position, what we are in Christ, what we have in Christ, we need to understand it. If you don't understand what we have in Christ, the work of Christ, yes, he has done it. 
just as I used to tell people, some people, that uh, uh, when they said that uh, God's mercy is new every day, I said, if you like, hold on to God's mercy or not. Today, mercy will come. Tomorrow will come. <clears throat> because it never fails. All those mercy will come. If you like, you can go to the top of mountain and be asking mercy, mercy, when God has already had mercy upon you. So, Christ has done this work. It is for you and I to really embrace it. Not only embrace it, so that you and I will be shepherds to some other people. When we have embraced it, when we understand it, when we hold on to what Christ has done for us in our life, when we know that when we know that we are free from all, then we'll be able to we'll be able to uh, uh, speak to other people and get them free. So that's what it is. Uh, the rest of the thing is for people who do who are just. This is what we use for uh, uh, new converts. When the people we have spoken to, so uh, now said uh, <laughs> when some people are confronted with the reality of who Christ is. They realize they have been, they have made a terrible error in what they have believed or how they have lived. That's true. That is true. Because sometimes when you are looking at these things and people are explaining it to you in another, in a real way, what it is, then you know that you have made some mistake. But if you have made some mistake, what next should you do? They are deeply convicted in their heart. Consider the example of men in Jerusalem whose eyes were open to the truth. That is in act. And in act, when they when Peter spoke to them, they asked him. Now, when they have had this, they, they were pierced to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brethren, what shall we do? Will you be the apostle to go out to speak about Christ's work and his love to people? So that the heart of people could be pierced and they will see themselves for what they are. You need to be shepherd and be guided. We know we have a chief shepherd. We have chief shepherd, we have the, the, the real shepherd, but you also, uh, Brother Paul, you agree with me that the shepherd in that one is just the pastor and the guidance is just like the overseer, just like bishop and overseer. So that's what that's that one. So we need you, you, and you, and you, and you. You are all shepherd, many shepherd. You need to make sure you speak about Christ to people. They could be your relative, whoever they may be. Please, please speak about Christ to each and every one of them. And then you can now say, so what can they do? Acknowledge, they need to acknowledge that they have sinned and are not acceptable to God unless they use God's method. And what is God's method? Romans 6, 23, that's God's gift of eternal life. Any of that person who refuses it is not anything. Repent and call upon the name of Jesus to save you. So you just tell them how to pray and things like that. Say forgiveness through the blood, uh, through his blood shed. So the blood of Jesus, which he has shed for us, is only for the forgiveness of sin, not as uh, uh, an insurance against accident or against whatever it is or for uh, for you pleading the blood of Jesus upon your wear, uh, what you are selling, uh, what you are selling can not, I mean, it's just for the remission of sin. Actually, that is right, uh, is the right ruler, rightful ruler in your life. Thank God for his love. So when you have done that, these things, you need to keep it within yourself. And then uh, my prayer is that the reminder of all these things Will not elude you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.